Swampert is my second favorite of the Hoenn Star Trio and easily one of my favorite water type Pokemon of all time. So I just had to take it to the lab and make it completely broken. But for real, slapping a choice band on this monster with its already high base attack of 110 and you are golden. The first battle of today's showcase is against Arabian Knight from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which I would definitely recommend joining if you want to battle me and other Pokemon trainers too. There's a link in the description down below. And with all that being said, let's jump straight into the first game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Arabian Knight. So they're going to lead off with the Iron Valiant. As I led off with my Swampert, I figured they'd lead with Torkoal, which is why I led with Swampert, because I'm pretty confident the choice banned an Earthquake KO's Torkoal, and I didn't think they would expect it, so, you know. But Swampert matches up pretty well against their team as well, which is pretty good, except from the Hisuian Lilligant, but we can always Terra to counteract that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight for an Earthquake here. No real reason not to. They actually go for a Swords Dance. They are not expecting a offensive Swampert right now. That is for sure. As we go for an Earthquake, that's going to definitely do a lot of damage to Iron Valley. Maybe even KO it. Nearly KOs it. We go for an Earthquake now. They go for... Another Swords Dance. That's a misclick. Either way, I'm getting a KO with a Swampert. I don't care. I don't care. Iron Valley goes down, which is amazing. All right, in comes Torkoal. So Torkoal's probably thinking, hey, I can take a hit from this thing, no problem. Um, which is what you would think if you was a Torkoal, right? So I'm going to go for an Earthquake real quick and show this Torkoal why that is BS. They withdraw. They probably go into the Hisuian Lilligant if I had to guess. They do go into the Lilligant. Lilligant gets two shot by an Earthquake, I think. I'm pretty confident. So let's go for that EQ. Two shotted. Nice. So what we can do now is we can just Terra Poison and go for another Earthquake. No problem. Swampert coming through for us right now. So they withdraw the Lilligant. They're obviously scouting for whatever reason. And they're going to go into Sun God Nika. I like that nickname. That's a good nickname for a Gouging Fire. Gets that Protosynthesis in its uh, attack, which is good to know. We go for the Terrestrialization here. They probably expected to switch out into the Corviknight and thought it was good to set up bait to go for a Dragon Dance. But no, 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 no. Swampert was not going to switch out against that Hisuian Lilligan, I'm afraid. We stay in. We Terra Poison to resist that Leaf Blade or that Close Combat, that Solar Blade. And we go straight for another Earthquake. The ground is trembling at the thought of Swampert right now. Swampert comes through with the Earthquake, which is fantastic. Walking Weight comes in. This thing's a threat, obviously. A very big threat. It gets a speed boost and everything like that. Uh, we're going to switch out Swampert here because it's not really... Um, I don't really want to take a Hydra Steam if I don't have to. I'd rather scout first, see what they're going to do. See if they're going to Terra, for example. Um, and I know I can't one-shot this walking weight with an Earthquake, so I want to weaken it a little bit first. But the Raging Bolt, I'm like, I'm happy with. The Torkoal, I'm happy with. We just need to get them to Terra. Um, so the Hydra Steam comes through. Going to do a lot of damage to the Slow King. Not enough to 2 it KO it, though, which is great. As uh, they don't really have a good switch in Sludge Bomb right now, which is great and all. Um, if they bring the Torkoal in, we just simply go for... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for a Future Sight, actually. Future Sight works out really well. So they do Terra. What type are they going to Terra into? Water for the Hydra Steam? Probably, right? Terra Water for the Hydra Steam. So that's going to do a lot of damage to us. It's definitely going to nearly KO us. And that's for sure. But I'm pretty confident in my um, my uh, Galarian Sloking right now. So let's go for the Hydra Steam. Let's see how much it does. Yeah, I'm pretty confident we can live that. We do, we do, we do, we do. So we go for a Future Sight right now. Which is great and all. However, we do want to keep Sloking around, that's for sure. Sloking definitely does really well against their entire team. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and just sack something off. I'm going to sack off... I'm going to sack off the Cleavor. I don't think Cleavor is doing much for us this game. So we withdraw. We're going to go into Cleavor real quick like so. Take a Hydra Steam to the face. And then what we'll do is um, we want to weaken this thing. So we'll go into Houndoom. And we'll go for that Dark Pulse. So the Flamethrower comes through. Critical hit. Didn't really matter. Well, it probably did matter, actually, because it was a Flamethrower. It's unstabbed. But either way, we could have gone We could have gone Houndoom then. We could have gone Houndoom. Um, let's go into Houndoom now. Because we have got the Focus Sash. So I know we can take a hit. So we're going to Cerberus. We'll go for a Dark Pulse. Now I know they're not Specs. I'm not as scared of them as I was before. So they go for the Hydro Steam. That's obviously going to take us right down to our Sash. As there we go, Sash comes down too. 
We go for a Dark Pulse now, which is definitely going to take them. Hopefully, Dark Pulse takes them to the range where uh, Future Sight KOs. I don't think it does, though. Let's see. It doesn't. It doesn't quite take them down. So that's unfortunate. Let's go for another Dark Pulse anyway. They go for another Hydro Steam. Obviously, it's boosted by Terra in the sun. Definitely KOing my Hound Doom right now at 1 HP. <laughs> Definitely came in the Houndoom. So Houndoom goes down, but it's not in vain. Because now we can go into Slow King once again and we can go straight for a Sludge Bomb. And there isn't really much on that team that wants to take a Sludge Bomb. All we need to do is get the Walking Wake out of the way and Swampert is golden. Absolutely golden. They withdraw the Walking Wake. Are they going to go into the Hisuian Lilligan now? Zenitsu, that's going to be the Raging Bolt. These are Demon Slayer references and One Piece references, etc. Which is good, because I know my anime. So I know my Pokemon, all right? But they get the special attack boost from the Protosynthesis in the sun. We get a Sludge Bomb off, which is nice. Does a bit of damage. Um, the Protosynthesis does wear off. They probably go for a Calm Mind here, if I had to guess. And I know that my Swampert can take a plus one Calm Mind uh, Dragon Pulse. Or maybe a Draco Meteor. I think we can take one Draco Meteor, that's for sure. So I'm going to Chilly Reception here. They go for the Calm Mind. The Raging Bolt's like, you know, I'm going to set up here. Definitely want to set up here. So the Raging Bolt is going to set up, which is fine. We go for that Chilly Reception. Tell a chillingly bad joke. The uh, weather takes complete 180. Goes from burning hot heat to freezing cold winds. And now we simply switch out into our Swampert. And hopefully, or they don't get a crit or something. Swampert comes in and we go for an Earthquake, which would be amazing. So Earthquake comes through, hopefully. There we go. They are leftovers, which is good to note. But I'm still confident that an Earthquake will definitely take them out. So let's go for said Earthquake real quick. They go for another Calm Mind! They really, they're really out here thinking we can take an Earthquake. They still don't realize what Choice Bander, do they? They don't realize what Choice Bandit is. Earthquake is going to cleanly take out that Raging Bolt. No problems there. All right, in comes the Torkoal. The Raging Bolt, the, the Walking Wake is still around, so we've got to watch out for that. They're going to get that Sun up, which is fine and dandy. And we go straight for an Earthquake here. There's no reason not to. I'm pretty confident it'll take out the Torkoal, and if not, it'll be very close. So Earthquake comes through. Nearly takes out the Torkoal. They go for a Lava Plume. Hopefully, we don't see a burn. We do get burned, but Swampert did really good this game. Put so much pressure on the team. Did really, really good. Did really, really good. And you know what? We can still take out that Torkoal. Earthquake comes through. That Torkoal is out of there, which is great. So with Torkoal out of there, they can now go into their Hisuian Lilligan if they want to. But, but, but here's the, here's the Sincher. Their stab moves do, are not very effective. So we're actually in a very good position. In comes the Lilligan. They're probably going to try and weaken us enough to the point where Walking Wake can't, can take us out with a uh, Hydro Steam, which is fine. Um, we 100% switch out here and go into Corviknight. We 100% go into Corviknight here so that we can go for an Ice Punch on this Hisuian Lilligan instead. Ice Punch will KO the, uh, the, the Walking Wake, I think. They go for a Victory Dance. That's terrifying. Not to my Corviknight, though. Definitely not to my Corviknight. As uh, now we just go simply for a Brave Bird. They go for an Axe Kick. Does a lot of damage. Rocky Helmet. Oh, it confuses us as well. The Rocky Helmet is going to take into effect though. Can we break through Confusion and go for this Brave Bird? That is the real question. We do. Brave Bird comes through. Lilligan goes down, which is fantastic. However, we are in prime range to be taken out by a Hydro Steam from that walking weight right now. Walking Woke comes in. Nicely done. There we go. It's going to definitely take us out with a uh, Hydro Steam right now or a Flamethrower, one of the two. Let's go for a Brave Bird. They do go for a Flamethrower in the sun. It's going to take us out, no problems. Noctis goes down. That's absolutely fine because all I need to do is go into Swamp It right now. That's all I really need to do is go to Swamp It. I'm even burnt. Swamp It is still a big threat. Still a big threat. If I wasn't burned, I would have 1v1 that um, Lilligan, no problem as well. Just know that. Just know that. Let's go for an Earthquake and take out this Walking Wake. And finally, finally, after hours of recording, 
I have got a Swampert video or two. <laughs> they go for the Hydro Steam. Now it comes down to this. Can Swampert take a Hydro Steam in the Sun Terra water? No, he can't. <laughs> this Swampert set is absolutely amazing. But it can't take a Terra Water Hydro Steam in the Sun from a Walking Wake at half health. Just know that. Just just know that. Okay, just know that. But it's fine. We have the Slow King in the back, so not all is lost. As we're going to be able to win this game with a Sludge Bomb. Like so. And boom. Sludge Bomb comes through. They go for a Draco. That's going to do a lot of damage, but not quite enough. I think, I think Hydra Steam still did more damage there. But Sludge Bomb comes through. That's going to take out the Walking Way. That's going to be the game. So GG, Arabian Nice. That was a fun one. I did enjoy that one. G bloody G. The second battle demonstrating the might of Swampert is against Madnim, and we have ourselves a really nice close game. Swampert definitely shows off a bit, but the whole team puts in the work in this one, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the second game. And the battle begins. Good luck out for Madnim. So they're going to lead off with Regirock, as I led off with my Corviknight. Not a bad lead for us. And um, we can just U-turn on this Regirock, no problem, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So we U-turn on the Regirock nice and powerfully. Break that sturdy that they potentially have. And uh, we can go into our Swampert now. Just like so. We'll bring Swampert straight in. And Swampert does really well against their team. Like their whole team cannot take an Earthquake for the life of them. Except from the Decidueye. So they go for the Stealth Rocks as I anticipated. And uh, we just go for an Earthquake real quick. And hopefully we get some big damage off on something. So they withdraw the Regirock. Are they going to go Decidueye? That's the real question. Espeon. I don't think Espeon's the play, brother. I don't think Espeon's the play. As we go for an EQ, that's going to destroy the Espeon. They lived with a Focus Sash. Are you kidding me right now? Now the question is, do they go for a Psychic or do they go for a Grass Knot? In other words, do I Terror or not? Or do I just go Houndoom? Let's just go Houndoom. So we withdraw Swampert like so. And we're going to go into our Houndoom because it can take a Psychic and it can take a Grass Knot. No problem. Um, so there we go, Handu comes in. We get some Stealth Frog Chip, which is unfortunate. They go for a Grass Knot, so I'm glad I didn't stay in. Because that Grass Knot would have stung. And now we go for a Dark Pulse. We 100% go for a Dark Pulse here. There's no reason not to. They withdraw the Espeon. They don't want to take a Dark Pulse. They don't want to... They don't want to Terror, maybe. And they're going to go into Regirock. Well, Regirock's a good one. He can definitely take a Dark Pulse, right? Yeah, he can take a Dark Pulse like a champ. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch out. We're going to go into our Serena real quick. And we'll go for a Rapid Spin and then a Power Whip combination. We withdraw our Houndoom. We're going to go into Serena. I'm pretty confident Serena can take a hit from this thing. They normally carry like Drain Punch anyway. So we should be able to take that no problem. As there's the Drain Punch like that. There we go. That's going to recover a little bit of the HP. Not too much. Not too much. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm going to go for a Power Whip. I'm not really bothered about no uh, Stealth Rocks. I can Rapid Spin on whatever they bring in next. Because they might bring in the Decidueye, you see. So they withdraw the Reggie Rock. Are they going to go Decidueye? Probably, right? Espeon comes in. So Espeon's going to take a Power Whip to the face if we can hit it. We do hit it, which is nice. So Espeon goes down, which is great. But let's not forget the thing that took it down to its Focus Sash was, of course, the Swampert. In comes the Cyclizar. Cyclozar is an interesting one to, to go into. Um, so I think I'm going to go for a Rapid Spin now. Get that speed boost. They go for a U-turn, which is definitely going to do a lot of damage to us. What are they going to do now? Are they going to go into Decidueye? They, they might expect the Triple Axle and not go Decidueye, to be honest with you. They might go Duraludon. Decidueye does come in. That's going to block the Rapid Spin, which is fine. Rapid Spin is officially blocked. But we do outspeed the Decidueye. So, and they can't go for a priority move. So let's go for a knockoff. Knockoff comes through. Cleanly nearly KOs the Decidueye, which is amazing. We get rid of that Covert Cloak. And they go for a Spirit Shackle, which is going to definitely take us out, I think. Yeah, Ma Majestic goes down, but not in vain. The Stealth Rocks don't really hinder Swampert, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, what I am worried about right now is going for the um, Houndoom Switch. So let's go for the Houndoom Switch. And then we'll just go straight for a Dark Pulse, because we want to take out this Decidueye, right? And after that, it's just Swampert Galore. So let's go for a Dark Pulse real quick. They withdraw the Decidueye. What are they going to go into? The Regirock? Surely not. The Regirock comes in. It can't take another Dark Pulse after this, though. That's for sure. So we go for a Dark Pulse. Good amount of damage. We go for another Dark Pulse, and that'll take out the Regirock, no problem. 
Dark Pulse comes through. Cleanly takes out the Regiro, which is fantastic. Down it goes. All right, in comes Cyclizar. So Cyclizar comes in. Uh, it can definitely take out our Houndoom, I think. We don't really need Houndoom for anything else. Let's go for a Dark Pulse and find out. So they go for a Dragon Claw, which should take us out. It does take us out. So Houndoom does go down. But it's not in vain because now we can freely go into our Swamp It. And I am going to go ahead and do just that. Let's go Swamp It real quick. Swamp It should be able to Earthquake everything on their team right now with a Terra Poison. It should be able to do that. Um, so let's go for an Earthquake right now on this thing. We won't Terra Poison just yet. They go for a Shed Tail. It's going to be like that, is it? It's going to be like that, is it? I see how it is. So they go for a Shed Tail. What are they going to go into? The Decidueye? Probably the Decidueye if I had to guess. Plusle comes in. Why Plusle? Either way, it's going to get a substitute, but that substitute is going to get broken real quick by an Earthquake. There we go. There we go. So Earthquake takes out the Plusle Substitute. And now all we need to do is go for a uh, Terrestrialization just in case they have Grass Knot and then go for a Earthquake and we take out the uh, Plusle. So there we go. Going to Terrestrialize real quick like so. They haven't Terrestrialized, otherwise they would have gone first. Because Plusle's definitely faster than my Swamp Pit. And we are Terra Poison, so we can resist that Grass Knot. They wouldn't go for a Thunderbolt. If anything, they go for a Nasty Plot. Grass Knot, there we go. So Grass Knot, we are resistant to that. We take it like a champ. Go for the Earthquake. That's going to KO the Plusle, which is fantastic. As they've got another Focus Sash. What is it with a Focus Sash today? Like, I've had a lot of battles before this where everything just didn't go right. And... There's a lot of Focus Sash users. Discharge comes through. That's going to sting a little bit. It might even paralyze us. It doesn't. We go for an Earthquake. And that cleanly takes out Plusle, which is fantastic. So with Plusle out of the way, we've got no more paralysis uh, options for my opponents. So in comes Decidueye. Interesting choice. Let's see if an Earthquake will take out Decidueye from here. I don't think they have anything that they can hit us with. Sucker Punch. Now nah, that's not doing much damage to us at all. As we go for an EQ, that should KO the Decidueye from there, right? It does. Nicely done by Swampert. There we go. Swampert came through for us. What an absolute legend. In comes the Giraladon. Let's see how what Giraladon can do to us. Um, can probably take us out, if I had to guess. Let's go for an EQ. Let's see if it'll KO from full. They're going to terrestrialize. What type are they going to terrestrialize into? Maybe Fairy, maybe Fighting for that body press. It violates and stuff like that. Terror Flying. Of course, the Terror Flying. Of course, the Terra Flying. Making them immune to my Earthquake. They go for a Dragon Pulse. So that's going to definitely KO us. So they didn't even need to Terra there. But they have done now. So let's see if we can pull this back. But Swampert definitely did good that game. That's for sure. So now we can easily go into our Cleavor. And we can just start going for a Stone, uh, stone Axe real quick. That's all we need to do. Stone Axe, Stone Axe, Stone Axe, Stone Axe. Cleanly nearly KOs the Duraludon, which is nice. It sets up the Stealth Rocks as well. Not that we needed it now. Um, and they go for a Flash Cannon, which will probably take out Cleavor. It does take out Cleavor, but it's fine. We've got this. Let's go into Drip Queen, the Slow King, and we'll finish off the game with some Sludge Bomb action. They go for a Snarl, which is going to lower our special attack, unfortunately. We go for a Sludge Bomb, and that's going to still not finish off the Duraludon because of that, which is very, very good tactic by my opponent right there. Very good tactic by my opponent right there. We go for a Sludge Bomb. Why is this game actually kind of close? They withdraw the Giraladon. They're going to try and get another Shed Tail off, aren't they? They go into Cyclazar. Cyclazar comes in. It's got that Regenerator, but the Stealth Rocks are going to dig in as we go for a Sludge Bomb. It should take them down. There we go. It takes them down just enough so they can't go for a Shed Tail, which is great. Absolutely fantastic work by a Slow King right now. Let's go for another Sludge Bomb. They go for a Rapid Spin to try and get a speed boost. Not that it really matters at this point. As uh, we go ahead and go for a Sludge Bomb. Oh, the, the Stealth Frogs. Yeah, they got rid of the Stealth Frogs as well for the Duraludon to come in now. So the Duraludon can come in now with no Stealth Frogs on the field. That makes sense. So they can bring it in to try and go for a Snarl or something. But I don't think the uh, Duraludon can win against a Corviknight and a Galarian Slow King. And it comes the Duraludon with balloons on his head. Like so. We just go for a Sludge Bomb real quick, and that's going to put a stop to that Giraladon, I think. Dragon Pulse comes through. No damage. We go for a Sludge Bomb, and that is going to be the game. So, G, 
GG to my opponent. That was a really fun one. Um, Swamp Pit did some good stuff, so I think I'm going to include this in the Swamp Pit video, which is good. And with that being said, GG Madden. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the new style that I'm doing with these. Here's a rental code for the team using today's battles, so feel free to use it. Let me know if you do. I want to hear all about it. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.